Here are the other examples if you need them um, for your notes. So we are doing systems of equations by substitution. So we are solving one equation for the variable, substituting it into the second equation, solving for that variable, and then substituting that answer into either one of the original equations to find the other variable. And then finally, we are checking our answer. So this first example, well, look, they actually, come on, both are solved for y, so step one is done for us. Now I can substitute this negative 4 in for y for my second equation and my second step, substituting in this one's easy peasy. Now I can go on to step 3 and solve for x. We know how to solve for x. We want to get it by itself. Right now it's being multiplied and added. We do the opposite. So subtract 20 from both sides. This is negative 24 equals 8x. Sorry, my pen messes up. And then I need to divide both sides by 8. Both sides, negative 3 equals x. All right. What was our next step? We're going to take that x. Oh, we already know what y is. We know y is negative 4. So we actually don't need to do step number 4. We can move on to step number 5 of checking our answer and see if negative 4 equals 8 times negative 3, our x that we just found, plus 20. Let's see if you do the math, then this ends up calculating out to negative 4, equaling negative 4. This checks out. So how you're going to write your answer depends, um, but most likely, remember I was talking about the graph up here. So we have an instance where it meets at one point of x equaling in their negative 3 and our y being at negative 4. So these two equations meet at negative 3, negative 4. Okay, let's move on. Step 1, I mean, problem 2, yeah, step 1, solve one equation for a variable. Well, they're both solved for y, so step 1 is again done for us. So let's move on to step two. I don't know if you guys like me changing my pen, but I do. So step two, I am going to plug this whole equation in for y. So negative three x minus four equals negative four x minus seven. Now I only have one variable and I can solve for that variable. Need to get it on one side by itself. Easiest way of doing that. Mm, let's, let's do this. Let's add 4x to both sides. Get it on this other side. Add 4x. That leaves minus 3 plus 4x leaves us with x minus 4 equals negative 7. Now I need to add 4 to both sides. x equals negative three. All right, that was what, step number three. Let's go on to step number four, which we're gonna take this x of negative three and plug it into one of our original equations. So one of these up here. So I'm gonna do that step right here just cause I don't have any room down there. So y equals negative three negative, that's a negative, times replacing my x or substituting my x in for negative 3 minus 4. Do the math, y equals 5. Fifth final important step, 
check your answer. So now I'm going to plug both my X and my Y into the equation that I haven't I didn't use. So y is 5 equals negative 4 times negative 3 minus 5. Remember if that right-hand side equals 5, then this is our solution. It does. 5 equals 5, so everything checks out. So our answer, 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 what color do we use? Our answer here is the point negative 3, 5. This is what we're looking for. Here, this is what we were looking for. All right. Those other examples on the back. This is on, oh, oh that wasn't cool. This is on the notes video. So we've already done that one. Looking at this one, step one is solving one of your equations for one of your variables. Look, y is already over by itself, so it's already solved for y, so I can move on to step number two. Oh man, I forgot to change my pen color. Pen color, pen color. Okay, step two, I'm gonna plug this entire equation in for y. So I leave everything else, 7x, plus eight, now times three X plus 22 equals 21. I'm gonna solve for X. Make sure you remember how to do this. We distribute this X to both of those numbers. This X, this eight for, to both of those numbers. So we've got seven X plus 24 X plus 176 equals 21. Combine like terms of our x's. What is that? 31x plus 176 equals 21. Still working to get x by itself. Subtract 176 from both sides. 31x equals negative. 155, divide both sides by 31. This is really bright. X equals negative 5. Okay, that was step number 3 when I solved for my X. Now, step number 4. I'm going to take that X and I'm going to put it into one of my original equations for x. I'm going to choose this first one so that I can solve for y easily because it's by itself. So y equals 3. Now instead of x, I'm putting in negative 5 plus 22. Do the math. y equals 7. Fifth and final, most important, before you say you are done, check your answer. So now, since I use that first equation to find my y, I'm going to plug my x and y into that second equation and see if it works out. So x was negative 5 and y was 7 equaling 21. So if this equals 21, then this is our answer. And wouldn't you know it, it does. 21. This is our answer. How did we write our answer? Since it's two graphs coming together at a point, x was negative 5, y is 7. This is our answer. These two graphs meet at the point negative 5. So, all right, <clears throat> let's look at these final two examples. If this will erase, because I just write all over the place. All right, step one said to Solve one of your equations for a variable. Either one of these works easy. So let us take that first one. So step one, we're gonna take four X plus Y equals two. Let's solve it for Y. So let's move the X, the four X over on the other side. 
Remember, everything goes with it, so it's negative 4x. So negative 4x plus 2. So now y equals negative 4x plus 2. Step 2. Step 2. So to plug in this, where I see y to the other equation. Negative 4x plus 2 plus 6 equals negative 4x. Step number 4, um, not 4, 3. Solve for this variable of x that we have here. So, I need to get my x's on one side. I got some already on the right side, so let's move these over by adding... 4x. So we got over here 2 plus 6, that's 8, equals, uh-oh, negative 4x plus 4x. Those just cancel out, and now I have 0. 8 equals 0. Is that right? 8 equals 0. 8 equals 0. Hmm. No. We didn't do anything wrong. 8 does not equal 0. And when we get down to here and our x and y have dropped out, or our x has dropped out of our equation, whatever variable we were trying to solve for, if it's dropped out, like meaning it's 0 now, and those two numbers do not equal each other, do not equal each other, then you are dealing with parallel lines. And remember, parallel lines never meet, so there is no solution. And that is our answer. No solution. Remember I told you we would have some instances where we would not have any solution. So it's when our variable is eliminated and the two numbers left do not equal each other. Okay? Let's do this last example. Look, lucky you, step number one is already done for you. We've got one equation already solved for a variable. So I can take that whole equation and plug it in for y of the other equation. Equation. So step number two, negative two. Now um, instead of y, I'm plugging in that full equation equals 4x minus 6. Okay, step number three, let's solve for that x. Remember, you have to distribute to both, distribute to both. Negative two times negative two x is 4x. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 equals 4x minus 6. Okay, let's keep solving. we got to get x on one side by itself. It doesn't matter. Let's move x over. So subtract x, subtract x. We're left on this side with negative 6. Uh-oh, negative 4x minus 4x. That's 0 again. We're left with, though, negative 6. So it's kind of like this last problem we did, but instead of not equaling, they, they equal this time. Again, we didn't do anything wrong. They do equal each other. When our variable drops out and they equal each other, then that means we're dealing with this same line. Remember, the same line means they're dependent, and there is infinite many solutions. Because at every single point, they are intersecting. Okay, if you need more help and more um, examples, then just let me know.